America's national parks and public lands have long been places of refuge in times of turmoil. But new government data first shared with ABC News shows people of color are less likely to take advantage of the great outdoors. Our Devin Dwyer takes a look at why that is and why it's so important for our collective health and the future of the parks themselves. The sweeping vistas stir the soul. Wildlife and waterfalls awaken a sense of wonder. The American wilderness, a playground for old and for young, and overwhelmingly white. When you look around, you don't see people that you identify with. You don't feel welcome. You feel out of place. You feel literally like you are an outsider. Ambreen Tarek is founder of Brown People Camping. When she was eight years old, her family moved from India to Minnesota, where she fell in love with the outdoors. 20 years later, she's still astonished when not to see more people like her. And they are Some people might say, isn't this just that people of color don't like to camp? Yeah. And to that, I would say, no, right? That's a generalization. And they're just because something isn't happening or the presence of someone is missing does not mean they don't want to be there. To many Americans of color, parks, campgrounds, and forest land are stubborn bastions of self-segregation. After 12,500 miles, 15 national parks, and untold state parks, we saw, I saw two black people. She said she saw four. four. I saw four. That was 1995 when Frank and Audrey Peterman took their first road trip to explore the nation's natural wonders. The history of America's wilderness loomed large. Historically, in the South in particular, uh, many atrocious things that happened to black people are uh, in the woods. Racism was a factor at the founding of America's national parks, created in part to be an escape for white urban elites. Several were racially segregated into the 1950s, many considered uninviting to people of color into the 1990s. We have an inherent fear, we do, because of our history about going into these remote rural places where we're not sure that will be accepted. Lauren Gay, the self-described outdoorsy diva, blogs about her experiences as a woman of color in the wilderness. Uh, so when you don't see it in marketing and advertising, for one, in the psyche, you don't necessarily think this is something that's for me. We have to be responsive to those needs. The National Park Service says the persistent whiteness of its 419 parks is an existential crisis. David Vela is the first Latino to lead the agency. Do you think the parks are affected by systemic racism? I think that uh, as a person of color, uh, I, I think that uh, our national parks and what I've found, there are places where we can learn more about what happened in the past. Um, because that reflects our thinking today. In a report first shared with ABC News, the Park Service finds 77% of its visitors are white. Just 23% are people of color. The minorities make up 42% of the U.S. population. What's the biggest factor behind the disparity? I think it's going to vary uh, among communities of color. Uh, the, the lack of transportation opportunities is clearly going to be a factor. But what a lot of folks don't understand is that uh, we're closer than what you think, especially in the urban areas. The national parks have tried marketing to minority communities with ads like these, training staff on sensitivity and hiring more rangers from diverse backgrounds. Less than 20% of the 20,000 Park Service employees are non-white. You need to have that cultural diversity reflected on both sides of the, of the visitor center desk, at the entrance station, at the campgrounds. Ranger Shelton Johnson has pushed diversity in the parks for 20 years, teaching countless visitors to Yosemite in California about the Buffalo Soldiers, the African Americans who helped protect park land a century ago. That has a profound impact because they're not expecting that story at all. Black people in Yosemite, <laughs> black people in Yosemite, we have arrived. I think that's just wonderful. In 2010, his outreach got a boost when Oprah Winfrey wanted to go camping. I just said to myself, you know what, that would be powerful if if the, the world's biggest celebrity, who is African-American, issued the, the invitation to the African-American community that I always dreamed of when I was a kid. Do you think it had an impact? It was Oprah. Next question. 
Of course, uh, of course it had an impact. But many say progress is still not happening quickly enough. If we don't address this and we don't see how all these things are interrelated, then we're, we, we're going to risk losing everything. We're not going to have public lands to enjoy. Groups like the Sierra Club have begun education campaigns within minority communities to promote access to nature and its physical and mental health benefits. If we look at it from a humanitarian um, perspective, this is, these are matters of life and death for some people. We need to have a conversation about how are people getting outdoors and connecting with nature where they live, in their neighborhoods. What all the recent events with George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, the Central Park incident, are shining a light on uh, black people in particular, but other people of color don't have that freedom to have that experience. You're worried about somebody calling the police on you. You're worried about just having a negative interaction based solely on the color of your skin. Danielle Williams, a fourth generation U.S. Army veteran and outdoor advocate, says racial profiling and stereotyping remain major concerns. A lot of us, we've been saying the same message over and over for, for years and for some people longer, um, but people have been listening. Protests for racial equality after the death of George Floyd last month give Williams hope that attitudes can change. She says in the outdoors, it means openness to camping options beyond backpacks and tents. We have to kind of tone down the elitism and just think about our language when we talk about the outdoors because car camping, that's great, right? Camping in your backyard, if you live in a family home, that's also wonderful. The survival of our national parks may depend on those families and their interest in spending time there. The census projects people of color will be a majority in America by 2044, a demographic shift that will impact park attendance and finances. If we don't make ourselves relevant to current and future generations, who is going to be the advocates for the protection and preservation of our nation's public lands? And Who's going to wear these uniforms? Our values aren't going to change, but how we do business has to. Advocates say allies of people of color have a big part to play. What can I do as a white person to be more welcoming to somebody of color? There are the most basic things you can do. One of the things I always talk about is when you see someone, smile and say hi. Treat us as you would any other person that you see, you know, Try really hard to swallow that, that question of, oh, well, what brings you here? Well, the same thing that brings you here. The Petermans say progress is possible. There's been a tremendous improvement, and it's largely coming from inside our communities. After visits to 185 parks in 47 states, they're optimistic more families of color will be joining them in the outdoors. They tell the story of the evolution of America. So if you want to know that story, and now there's so much um, confusion about the real American story, you will find them in the national parks. For ABC News Live, I'm Devin Dwyer in Rock Creek Park. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.